Hi guys, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 15 in Mapping Data Flow Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to remove first few and last few rows from an Excel using Mapping Data Flow. So let's see what our requirement is. So in this use case, we want to remove few rows from the starting and few rows from the end of an Excel data sheet using Mapping Data Flow. Okay. So as you can see, the first image is what our source data is. Okay, so it has uh, three columns. Okay, one is ID, other one is player name, and the third one is country, and it has twelve rows in it. Okay, so basically we want to remove few rows from the starting. So in our case, we want to eliminate these two rows from the starting, and we want to eliminate three rows from the end, and this is how we are expecting our output to be looking like. Okay. So how to achieve that using mapping data flow. So first of all, let me clear all this. And let's suppose this same data would be present in SQL table. Then what we could have done is we could have used something called row number function. Okay. So what this function does is it assigns an incremental value to each of the rows. Okay. So suppose it will give these kinds of values to each rows and uh, this would be stored in one column suppose I'm giving this column name as row number row num okay so then what we could we could have done is we could have fetched only those data which is having row num column that is greater than minimum of minimum of row num okay that is greater than minimum of row num plus one okay because minimum of row number is this one that is one okay and uh, we want to grab all the data which are which is greater than 2 okay and we want to grab all the records which are having row number greater than 2 right in our case so we could have written this logic like row number should be greater than minimum of row number plus 1 similarly we could have given another condition that is row number should be less than maximum of row number okay minus 2 why because maximum of row number in this case is this one 12 right it, it would be 12 here and we want to eliminate this one as well as this one so maximum of my, uh, row number minus 2 so it would it would give only these records if we give these two conditions okay so this is how we could have done if our uh, SQL if our source would be a SQL table okay and the same query we could have written even in our data flow because because if we add a data set pointing to SQL table then we would be having an option to write SQL query here inside the source transformation itself but as our source data is in Excel so we don't have an option to write a SQL query there so how to achieve this so we need to see what are the alternate solutions here okay so first of all let me create a data set pointing to the source data so in our case i have uploaded the data in my adls gen2 account in anu demo folder okay so my data is in xls that is uh, excel format and here if i click on edit i won't be able to see anything because it is fully encrypted okay so let me create a data set pointing to the same uh, file so let me choose adls gen2 and here i'll select excel format let me select the linked service and let me go to the file path and select my excel file and let me select a new demo folder and this is our file batsman.xls let me select this and click on ok and let me select the sheet name so i'm selecting sheet 1 here and let me select first row as header because we have header here in the source data ok so i have selected that and let me import schema as well and let me hit on ok so our data set is ready let me preview the data here once so now our source data is visible you can see we have rows till uh, id equals to 1012 okay so there are 12 rows basically now as we discussed we want to have something equivalent to row number function right so in data flow there is something called surrogate key which behaves in a similar way and we can assign incremental values with the help of this surrogate key to each of the rows so let me give the column uh, name as row num okay and let me preview the data so we are expecting it will generate a new column called row num and it will have incremental value which will be assigned to each of the rows 
so let's wait for the data to appear so now you can see row num uh, column has been generated and it is having incremental value corresponding to each of the rows okay now we want to fetch what is the minimum row number and what is the maximum row number okay so that we can eliminate uh, few records from the starting and few, few records from the ending okay so to do that we need to use minimum function and maximum function okay so if i add something called derived column transformation and if i try to use minimum and maximum function here let me try to do that so you can see min function is disabled similarly max function is also disabled here and what is the error it is giving is it says this function is only available in aggregate pivot and pivot and window transformation so in data flow these are the only transformations where we can use some aggregate function so as minimum and maximum are aggregate functions so we cannot use it in any other transformations other than these four transformations okay so let me remove this derived column transformation and let me add an aggregate transformation here okay and here this group by is an optional tab we can skip that and in aggregate we need to define column here so let me give uh, something called minimum row and let me give something as maximum row as we want these two values okay so here in expression i will use minimum function now if we see this now it is it is enabled okay we can use this uh, function now so let me click on this and here let me give row number okay the newly generated column okay so minimum of row number we need this must give 1 as the output and similarly maximum of row number let me give max function here and let me inside this argument let me provide row number column okay so if I so let me hit on save and finish and let me now preview the data so you can see we are getting minimum row which is 1 and maximum row which is 12 so let me just recheck so you can see 12 is the maximum id and 12 is the maximum row number also so we are good here we are getting 1 as the minimum and 12 as the maximum row number okay so we are good till this point but this is not what we wanted to achieve right rather we need to use these values on top of our source data so that we can write expression using these values and eliminate the unwanted records right so we need some temporary storage where we can save these values and then we can use these to write the expression okay so here we can make use of something called cache sync okay so in the sync transformation we have an option to store the data in spark cache memory okay so if we select this cache option we we don't need to specify any data set so that means that the data is not getting physically stored in some data store but it will be stored in a cache memory okay so if i select this you can see there is no other option that we need to provide okay and as we have discussed to know more about any transformation we can always click on this learn more option and it will redirect us to the ms documentation and here we will be able to see what is written about cache sync okay so it it is uh, a very descriptive information here you can read through it but i want to know how to use this okay so let me see to learn more about cache lookup syntax let, let me click on this okay and it redirected me to the expression builder documentation okay and here it gives complete description that a cached lookup allows you to do inline lookup of output of cached sync okay there are two functions available to use each sync one is lookup function and the other one is outputs function so lookup function is used mainly when we have some matching condition or matching columns between two sources between multiple transformations okay but in our case we need to use output function and it doesn't take any parameter and it returns the entire cache sync as array of complex columns so because it returns the output as an array of columns so we need to define this as the syntax so you can see this is how we need to provide the syntax and we we are treating it as an array that's why we are giving square bracket to to fetch out the element first element of the array okay so don't worry about this we will try to use this in the data flow practically so now we are storing these two values in the cache sync okay now on top of our source data we need to filter out 
the records based on these two conditions i mean based on expression we that we will be writing using these two these two values okay so now so whatever is present as a cache data we need to use that on top of our source data itself okay so for that let me add the source again and let me provide the same data set which we have used in source 1 so let me choose the same here let me select excel 6 as the data set okay and now let me add surrogate key again to just regenerate the row number okay and on top of this now we need to filter out the records okay and here in the filter expression builder we need to write the expression to filter out records based on the cached output okay so as we discussed earlier our condition is row number should be greater than minimum of row number plus one because this is the minimum row and we want to eliminate two rows so it should be greater than minimum of row number plus one okay this is first condition and the second condition is it should be less than maximum of row number minus two okay because we need to eliminate three records so it should be greater than minimum of row number plus one and it should be less than min maximum of row number plus minus two okay so this is our condition and we need to write the expression here so let me give row number should be greater than minimum of row number so here we can't use minimum function right so we need to go to cached lookup and here we need to write this expression so once i selected this sync transformation name so it generated pound symbol as well because here if you see the uh, syntax it should be sync transformation name then pound symbol then output function so let me give outputs outputs okay this is the function name and because it is an array so we need to give first item of array here okay so let me give one and then what is the column name in our case let me hit on save and finish and let me go back to here and you can see min row and max row are two columns so let me go back and let me write min row okay so this is one condition row number should be greater than minimum row plus one okay this is one condition and we need to provide another condition here that row number should be less than then again we need to go to here and sync one then outputs okay output function then first item of the array dot max row max row minus two right we are eliminating three records from the end so these two conditions should be fulfilled so the records where these two conditions are fulfilled will be re returned okay so let me hit on save and finish and let me preview the data now so we are expecting records between id 1003 to 1009 should be coming okay so you can see the data is visible now and it it is as expected id from 1003 to 1009 is coming okay now we don't need row number in our output right so let me use select transformation to eliminate row number column okay let me delete this and let me add a sync transformation to load this data into our csv uh, output file okay so let me create a new data set pointing to adls gen 2 and let me hit on csv and let me select the existing link service and let me point to a new demo container and let me hit on ok and let me give first row as header and let me click on none and here in settings we need to provide output to single file and we need to provide the file name so let me give the file name is output um, batsman dot csv okay so now let's run this data flow using a new pipeline okay and let's debug this pipeline okay so let's wait for this data flow execution to be completed then we will see if the new file gets generated perfectly or not okay so our data flow execution is completed now let me go back to this demo folder and let me hit on refresh so you can see output file has been generated let's check the output now so yeah our output is coming perfectly we have eliminated two records from the starting so as you can see 
first record is having ID 1003 and till 1009 we are getting the records and all the other records are eliminated. So this is what we wanted to achieve, right? So we are good. So we can use this logic to eliminate any number of records from starting and any number of records from end. If we don't know the range, right? In our last video, we have used something like this to define the range. Okay. If we don't know this range, we can make use of this workaround and we can get the uh, records copied with the help of cache sync. Okay. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like the content. Please keep supporting this channel by hitting on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. Please stay tuned. Take care. Thanks.